good morning, good afternoon. Digital transformation is on every customer's and enterprise's mind these days. Today, I will be talking about how to make digital transformation a success by focusing on enterprise adoption. I'm Eva Zauke, and I'm the global head of SAP Enterprise Adoption. So what are key drivers of adoption? What is quality in the cloud about? What do local solutions for global success are meaning? How to deal with the users empowered with enablement? I will be talking about select customers, customer cases and wrap up with a call to action. Succeeding in the new normal. Actually, what we observe today are several drivers of change in different areas. On the one hand side, it's about the digital technologies and their impact on the enterprises. So about artificial intelligence, the internet of things, blockchain, many other technologies which are shifting the gears in enterprises. On the other side, we see customers' expectations are changing. So consumers are most likely to transfer their expectations towards the way they use enterprise solutions. So we have here a consumability topic, a topic of simplicity, topic how customers are experiencing and expecting solutions to behave. On the other side, we see business models are changing to outcome-based, to service-based. So there are several drivers of change which are important to consider. On the other side, we see key trends that are driving innovation across industries. Let me name a few here. I was already talking about innovative business models and the customer centricity, which is important for enterprises to consider. We see industry boundaries blurring. When you consider the automotive industry, you might ask yourself, is this a um, car manufacturer or a software company or both? We see the complexity with the ecosystem. So the partner of today is also the competitor of tomorrow. So how to deal with that? And actually the changing workforce. Enterprises today have five generations of people being employed in the enterprise. Measures of success, they are also evolving. We were considering so far the top line, which is very much influenced by the business model innovation. On the other side, optimization of the bottom line with the operational excellence, with effectiveness and efficiencies. But to make enterprises successful in the future, there's also a third dimension added to the equation, and this is the green line. The sustainability aspects, which are then a triangle to form the success and measures of success of enterprises in the future. When we look at the cloud and enterprises are shifting to the cloud very rapidly, what does it mean and how is cloud impacting customer expectations? And on the other side, asks for requirements for customer solutions being enterprise ready, for SAP solutions being enterprise ready. Actually, it's again, the ease of use and experience. It's ease of consumption. Software is available instantly. Um, it's flexible, it's scalable but as businesses are growing. And there is an increased time to value, which is important here to realize benefits very quickly. Customers are expecting quality. They expect users to be enabled and um, work with cloud solutions right from the beginning. We are talking the area of compliance and localization. In the end, it's about user productivity and user satisfaction and the productivity of the user using SAP applications. What does it mean for software being enterprise ready? Actually, customers are having complex environment. So to support this to the best extent possibility, offering the ability to scale all deployment options and the topic of integration, that there is a seamless experience as well as integration on the data level that customers can act on business processes very successfully and very quickly. What is the value creation right now when we look at the um, digital transformation and actually the value creation is in the front and center. And when you see here, 60% of organization are only successful with digital transformation. IT projects capturing benefits, there are only 20% out of them. Actually, it comes to the most extent possible that the effective user adoption with 72% is the most important factor in realizing business value for companies. Let me talk about three important aspects to uh, help customers to drive adoption and create value out of the intelligent enterprise. Obviously, quality cost. Companies are rate quality as highly important. Quality enables them to perform solutions in a very timely manner. And this is not only about the experience, it's about superior functionality 
It's about robust data security and the ease of availability of the software to the customer. Localization, it's a top enabler to public cloud adoption, which is regulatory compliance. So here, regulatory compliance is important for customers to adopt solutions in the cloud. And when we look at the SAP user, companies are by 72% more likely to be highly satisfied with SAP deployments when the user has learned, when the user is enabled. On the other side, on average, there are around 50% of improved business performance when people have learned prior to using SAP software and working with the business processes. So these three factors are important to create value along the intelligent enterprise, which comes in several facets. It comes with an integrated stack between the business technology platform, the end-to-end -end applications in the line of business, as well as the verticals in the industries, paired with experience management and Climate 21, and also focusing on the business networks, which allow companies to collaborate across different line of business with the suppliers and business partners. Let me talk a little bit about the quality in the cloud, because here we see a paradigm shift. And actually, we as SAP strive to deliver high quality customer experiences. And we have a pretty comprehensive view on quality. So you see here our quality attributes, which are mandatory for product development. And it starts with the UX consistency. So the consistency of the user experience goes on with accessibility, the functional correctness, the business configuration, security integration, as well as globalization to make solutions available in countries, in the local markets where customers are running their business. It's about performance to allow for scaling. It's about for licensing, operations and support in the software lifecycle. So along this whole stack of the software, starting with your user experience down to the integration and security, also expanding towards operations and support and software lifecycle. These are important product standards for us here at SAP to consider. And they are considered along the innovation lifecycle. So development, maintenance, and cloud operations, as well as the definition of a product in preparation of the go-to-market. So we are striving for and showing the quality along the full development lifecycle. When we are talking how to drive quality in the cloud and our developers are developing software, obviously, to make our customers successful, we are striving actually to build in quality right from the start. So it's called test-driven development. So how we are doing that. Actually, uh, developers are first writing really uh, for a feature, a new test. So they begin with writing a test and they write a failing test. They make the test pass and then refactor. With that, they are proving that the feature is running well, is developed in a good quality, but they consider quality from the beginning. The other aspect is automation and it goes um, along the whole stack from a unit to component to integration as well as then to the user interface where we try to automate to the best extent possible on the other side we are also experimenting with exploratory tests with chaos testing or chaos theory in testing yet this allows for also for risk mitigation and complements the high and automated testing here for the cloud solutions as well as on-premise an important part of our interaction is obviously with our customers. And here we are in a, using really effective feedback loops to support the fit for purpose dimension in our quality. And there are many ways to interact with customers. And we obviously are performing very well and interacting very well along different um, ways of interaction. So let me name a few, a couple of examples to you. Customer surveys. Actually, this is about the net promoter score and satisfaction. We are looking at the support metrics, so the number of incidents per customer per week, and also our resolution and response in according to the SLA as timely as possible. We have workshops with customers. We have an executive advisory board, workshops on integration. We have, uh, through our regional implementation group, feedback from customers from Lighthouse implementation projects, how they are experiencing the software being implemented at their customer site. And we have a pre-release testing and SAP early adoption care program to cover for both phases, either pre-release or a post-release programs. Let me now move towards local solutions, which are enabling global success of our customers. Obviously, we know that the world is changing. 
we have a 300% of emerging markets. The growth is here by 2025. When we look at the tax authorities surveyed, 15 of 16 are using data analytics to drive audit case selection. Talking about global taxes, 80% of enterprises state this is a challenge to their ERP. The volume with regards to e-governance has significantly increased in the last two years and moving forward to 2025. E-invoicing, you see here the numbers increasing very rapidly depending on countries. And last but not least, the digital transformation. So we see actually two effects out of COVID-19 right now. On the one hand side, you see that 77% of CEOs reported that COVID-19 accelerates the need for digital transformation. On the other side, we see companies as this COVID-19 pandemic is progressing. We see them asking for more solutions in the area of effectiveness and efficiency. So this is both. On the one hand side, it fuels digital transformation. On the other side, we see that there is an increased need for enterprises to work on efficiency and effectiveness. Let me talk you through a little bit from the perspective of globalization services. So what is the effect of the localization and globalization to the intelligent enterprise? Actually, there are a couple of effects. On the one hand side, we are localizing SAP products, making them relevant in the local market. This means translation. This means application of all regulatory changes and effects you have to cover or we have to cover for our customers to make them successful in the respective country as well as globally. On the other side, we are running dedicated solutions to make enterprises performing well as global companies. So there is the global tax compliance. This is the document compliance where you have to exchange documents with the government or another party, which has to be secure um, and compliant. Social media integration, success factors, visa and permits management solution. These are some examples of solutions we are offering to our customers to allow for a global run business to be successful. On the other side, we have the industry dimension. Here, to name a few examples, it's utilities for Brazil or transportation management for Russia. So these are localized solutions in the industry space for allow for certain countries and certain customer needs. When we look at localization as a whole, it enables customers to get value of their core business applications across geographies by adapting to local needs. So this is both across geographies and adapting to local needs. And we have areas of business we are covering here. So this is about tax, it's about digital compliance, it's about HR and payroll, and it's about payments. On the other side, that's about internalization. So supporting multi multiple languages, supporting time zones, supporting currencies, supporting cal calendars, and also the availability in languages with the natural language, but also machine translation, where we are uh, performing well to make the languages available to our customers. To give you a couple of numbers here, we have annually around uh, 1,000 um, plus legal changes we are applying here. We are operating here, allowing our customers to operate more in more than 180 countries. And we are covering for more than 60 languages, we can support our customers to run their business across the globe in the dedicated location as well. When we look at an example for S4HANA 2020, so any premise and cloud, we see here a pretty remarkable coverage of the standard localization, which is 64 countries. And we have here 39 languages where as for HANA 2020, the edition 2020 is offered to our customers to enable them to run in countries depending on the local language. When we look at another example, and this is COVID-19, obviously the pandemic has started this year already in March uh, and is going on. So this is an ongoing delivery for us to really allow and implement all COVID-19 related legal changes, which are here in the number of 180 plus for 47 countries. And we are continuing on that path. So on the one hand side, it's really about tax um, and emergency legislations in the area like taxes or payroll, which has been implemented very quickly by enterprises. On the other side, it's really to ensure the delivery of legal changes to our customers that they can rely upon and have the 
legal changes implemented in the software at the moment where they need this. When we look at some examples, we have the tax changes in Germany, Estonia, Saudi Arabia. There were a couple of payroll changes. So new absence codes in some countries, new sick leaves, new compensation, new parental leave introduced, new ways to report on people trained. So there are a couple of examples which came with COVID-19, which are relevant here, where we are keen to implement this as timely as possible, that enterprises, businesses, customers are prepared and enabled to run the business successfully. When we look at the numbers actually on the invoicing regulations and the global evolution, you see here some uh, remarkable um, evolve, evolution of these numbers uh, across the, along the years. So starting with 2011, where we have four new regulations up to 2020 with 28. And this is on the one hand side in countries, on the other side in areas of the e-invoicing. So the numbers are exploding or growing very quickly uh, and also the availability in the countries. Let me give you a, a couple of other examples in terms of S4HANA. So we are talking document compliance. I mentioned this already. So this is here to be meant to be a real-time exchange of electronic documents with many local, being compliant with many local regulations, be it the government, be it an enterprise. It's integrated here. It's pairing uh, this with government initiatives. And also we have here an integration software as a service solution, which is delivering business outcome faster, be it on the document side, be it on the tax side, be it on the payroll. When we see enterprises acting globally and performing locally, one of the key uh, asks from customers is how I'm going on with compliance. And obviously these are global questions, but relevant to a local business. So we are here to offer uh, advanced compliance reporting to a globally run business, which is homogeneous, value adding that enterprises are always in a position to report on their compliance. And as well, the localization toolkit, which is the way forward to extend SAP as for HANA. So it comes in two notions. The localization toolkit is in-app or side-by-side, -side, which allows customers and partners actually to add features and functions on top of the standard delivered scope to allow them to run their enterprises even more successfully. Let me summarize the benefits of the localization and the effect it creates on the businesses of our customers. On the one hand side, it's about staying up to date and being compliant with evolving global and local regulations. On the other side, as an intelligent enterprise, you can expand your global business into new markets. As a third, maintaining compliance against legal changes. So when we look at the numbers, we look at the growth of the legal changes required to be implemented. These are pretty remarkable numbers and businesses have here should be empowered and are empowered to run successfully and being compliant. We are talking about managing a global workforce as well as a local workforce and being compliant here also as well to the standards and regulations which are applicable to the workforce and also benefiting from documentation, virtual sessions and blogs to support here and get knowledge and exchange with our experts. Let me talk about the user which is playing an important role in enterprises to be successful and also in the end, in the adoption of the SAP solutions at the customer side. When we look at the development of digital skills, actually this drives the digital transformation success. So there is a more than 1 billion jobs which will be transformed. Um, so this is one third of all jobs worldwide, which are most likely to be transformed by technology in the next decade. 87% of the companies are facing skill gaps or expecting to face skill gaps in the next five years. Lacking skills and knowledge is the number one transformation barrier for enterprises to be successful in their digital transformation. And the transformation success is three times higher when organizations have invested into the right amount of skills. So the topic is obviously of major importance to be successful when transforming into digital enterprises. When we look at the perspective of learning, how has this evolved now in the digital age? And obviously COVID-19 has fueled many of these trends already. So it has evolved towards a self-led virtual and continuous learning of the SAP user of the person learning. It's anytime and anywhere. It's social collaborative. So people wanna exchange with each other 
They want to ask questions, get answers, have a discussion. It's also about a personalization. So what is my target? What do I want to learn? What's the recommendation? What I have, do I have to learn? What could I explore more if I'm interested? It's about a paradigm shift and empowering the people to lead their own learning. So it's not about a training being given and saying this is the way you want to go. It's about empowerment that people lead their development and the learning by themselves. And actually it's about the user, which should be empowered in the flow of work, not to leave the work context. Obviously with home offices being very popular these days due to the recent COVID-19, it's actually even more important that the user is empowered and enabled in the context of the work and moves forward while working with the application. And we see different models of procurement and purchasing, so to speak. We see for free offerings, we see subscription base. So this is not a one-time fee we see here for the learning. Actually, when we talk about customers, we see two different use cases. When customers are talking about learning and how they want to enable the, the SAP user. When you look at SAP software, you already see contextual help. So this is when you click on the question mark, you see the contextual help, which provides already explanations to the user. We have in the software embedded learning, which is created learning material available to the user as well. And we have guided tours. So these are videos which are helping the user in the course of their work when they are doing a transaction. So here they are supporting them with knowledge. Customers are asking for more. And this is also important here to state. Customers are actually looking for two use cases. They want to ad adjust the content provided by SAP to their own company specific. This is important as customers have different processes, they have different guidance, they have different regulations, and they have company specific that they are able to adjust the content SAP is providing to the needs of the customer. On the other side, it's about creation of own learning material. And this can be in the SAP context, but this can be also in the area of soft skills or empowerment of the user. What is important here, that we are talking an embeddedness of the learning within the application. So the learning is integrated into SAP products as for HANA, as for HANA Cloud, Cloud Platform, Success Vectors, Fieldless, Customer Experience, many other products. So the user gets the enablement while he's working with the application. Does not need to shift and leave the context of the application and does not need to leave the application as such and go to a training or go somewhere else. He or she can learn within the application where the learning need occurs or where the learning material is provided. Let me talk about select customer use cases. So how com companies are taking advantage of our offerings here? What are priority cases? How do they evolve on the digital transformation? What are use cases here? Actually, when we look at a huge multinational conglomerate corporation, it actually reimagined the way people learn. And also, obviously, COVID-19 was here, also a huge trigger. So they shifted completely from PowerPoint-based and PowerPoint-based learning uh, being delivered in, in binders to digital learning with Enable Now for its more than 130,000 users. We have an American retailer who is now training their people with regards to COVID-19. So creation of the learning material for them, for people working in the store and how to behave when meeting customers, how to apply the hygiene criteria, how to deal with the mask and distance, all of these things. These are important procedures which have been documented and also rolled out to more than 450,000 employees. When we look at enablement as a service, so we look here at Capgemini, our first partner in the enablement as a service area. So they create for their customers, and this is an example of Team Seti, enabled material to, for the customer to use. We talk Nestle here. We helped here Nestle in Brazil to meet the compliance with Brazilian tax law. And uh, you see here the number of invoices, which is more than 20 million invoices per year. We see Leckerland. Leckerland, a retailer in, in Germany, which is helping preparing their people to be successful with the new S4HANA introduction of S4HANA. So they have 100, 250 key users which captured the knowledge with Enable Now and made it available to more than 2,000 users of Leckerland software. Migros, we see here also preparing 
at the user to be successful while the transformation to S4HANA was done. And we see Sydney Water, another example where they really took care and said at the beginning of the software, when the software is starting to be used productively, so at the point of go live, they wanted all the users to be enabled and started planning and implementing the learning to meet these expectations. Okay, so let me wrap up the session for today. And actually, I would like to summarize the four most important points. First, we are talking the quality in the cloud. So here at SAP, we have a pretty comprehensive framework to deal with quality. And obviously, this is of high importance to us to deliver solutions in quality to meet and excel customers' expectations. We are talking the functional correctness. We are talking the performance. But we are also talking quality attributes like accessibility, integration, and the consistency of the UX. To drive quality in the cloud, we are actually testing quality in a different way. We are doing test-driven development. We are increasing the level of automation as well as we are interacting with customers in many different ways to get their feedback and also to do the fit for purpose quality dimension. We are talking local solutions for global success. So actually for enterprises, it's very important to stay up to date and being compliant with evolving global and local regulations. What are we doing here and what is here of value to the customer? Actually, we are adapting first SAP software to the local needs. So we are translating SAP software and on the other side, applying all regulations to this local versions. On the other side, we are offering global solutions for global enterprises, considering also their local needs. So we are here talking the area of tax, we are talking the area of digital compliance, we are talking here the availability in different languages, we are talking here HR, payroll and payments. We are talking here a coverage in more than 180 countries, more than 80 languages, and obviously more than 1000 legal changes across solutions annually. The SAP user is key to make a digital transformation a success. In the end, the adoption of a software is most likely to be seen by performing by a well-enabled SAP user. So here, our um, design point is to enable the user in the flow of work, that the user can learn about software, but also about company-specific procedures and everything a company wants the user to learn in the flow of work. Here we are actually offering and considering two different aspects. The first is the material provided by SAP, which is the contextual help, the embedded learning and the guided tours. On the other side, it's important for companies to also create own material to their needs or adjust material provided by SAP to meet really their local uh, company specifics and make them available to the user. When we look up here in the area of value creation and business outcomes, actually for us, it's about that we ensure the value creation for our customers as a part of the digital transformation with a focus on adoption. So customers are supported by us to make the digital transformation a success. And this is for us really the highest priority here. And we are doing this with three aspects, quality, localization, as well as the SAP uh, enablement of the user to succeed today and succeed in the future. When you're looking for more innovations and information over TechEd, uh, you see a couple of sessions here. I want to also spell out. So these are sessions where it's about integration with the cloud platform, about migration, integration services to multi-cloud. It's about integration of design guidelines and patterns and also the roadmap of the respective products. So the cloud platform integration suite and SAP process integration software which is the baseline for our solutions, globalized solutions. They are built upon cloud platform. So please have a look at the sessions and enjoy the material provided there. There's also a couple of websites where you can go for further reading, be it on the SAP globalization services on Able Now, as well as um, joining the community and learn about SAP products on our homepage. Thanks for today. I'm looking forward to, your, to see your comments, you see your questions and also continuing supporting you being successful wherever you are on your journey to digital transformation. Thanks for today.